Uh, so today uh, I'm going to teach you about the management of flat rate. Last week, uh, unfortunately, there was power failure over here in the IT department, due to which uh, I was not able to take the class. Yet I waited for a uh, half an hour, but there was no resume or no resumption of the power. So today, uh, the topic which was missed in the last class, we will uh, continue with that management of flat rate. Now, see, flat rate is uh, actually opacification of the lens and it is uh, one of the most commonest cause of reversible blindness in the whole world. This is the commonest ocular disorder that is the most commonest one in the whole world. Okay. G, hello. जी सर ठीक नाउ कैटरेक्ट व्हिच इज़ द ऑमनेस पॉस ऑफ़ रिवर्सल ब्लाइंडनेस इट इज़ बीइंग ट्रीटेड एंड इट इज़ बीइंग मैनेज्ड इन टू वेज वन वे इज़ द नॉन सर्जिकल द अदर इज़ द सर्जिकल एक्चुअली there is a misconception that every cataract patient should be admitted and need cataract surgery this is a wrong concept actually sometimes we have to uh, manage the patient non surgically uh, until and unless the uh, circumstances are uh, beneficial for the patient then we will go for the surgery okay uh, we can understand this point in a way like that Okay, we have uh, a rich rural population as compared to the western countries, and therefore in western countries, what happens that whenever the vision of the patient reduces a little bit from normal, they will go for the surgery and they will demand surgery for the cataract. While in our country, people who are mostly living in the rural areas, they do not will. Ask you for the surgical treatment of cataract. They will say that please give me some medicine, and uh, we will uh, live with this cataract until we are completely blind or we are, uh, you know, handicapped, or we will uh, we are not able to carry out the normal uh, daily procedures. So that is why we should have the idea of non-surgical management also in case of cataract treatment. Actually, uh, we have to treat the cause of the cataract. There are many causes of the cataract, like diabetes, like some medicines, like people who are working in the X-rays department, and uh, even some diseases of the eye. These are all different etiologies of the cataract formation. When you will be taught about the classification of cataract, you will come to know that there are many causes of cataract. Uh, some of them are. Like diabetes can cause cataract, steroids can cause cataract, phenothiazine, myotics, even X-rays or infrared rays exposure can cause cataract, and similarly diseases of the eye like uveitis may cause cataract. So whenever you are treating cataract, the first thing is that you alleviate these causes, and then you will start the treatment. Uh, the other is to delay the progression. There are some medicines. Which delay the cataract progression. For example, many iodides like sodium and potassium iodides are used in the form of topical drops. They actually delay the cataract formation. Okay? Even the aspirin and vitamin E, they are also used to delay the cataract formation. Okay? Okay. Uh, sometimes the cataract is visually significant. Visually significant means that a patient uh, have problem in doing daily work uh, with the cataract. Then we say that this patient is having visually significant cataract. Okay? Among these patients, they have some, you know, social or financial problems that they will ask you to 
uh, have some temporary treatment of the cataract so that we can delay a little bit and we will go for the surgery in the near future. In those cases, for, you have to go for the other options, like you have to give the glasses, try to uh, correct the vision by glasses as much as, much as possible. Okay? Arrangement of illumination patient with peripheral opacity is bright, uh, brilliant illumination. For example, if a patient is having a uh, cortical cataract, his uh, center will be clear. So in those cases, if they, you will give them bright illumination, ask them to work in a good light, uh, then they will have better vision as compared to a vision in the dim light. Sometimes other cataracts like central cataract or the nuclear cataract, in these cases, the patient will have problem, instead of in darkness, they will have problem more in light because the pupil will constrict and the central portion is already been blocked by the nuclear cataract. So in these cases, you have to ask them to wear dark glasses so that the pupil dilates and they can see through the periphery. And sometimes you will even have to use the dilating drops like mitriatics or phenylephrine or tropicamide in order to dilate the pupil and so that these people can have a better vision until and unless they go for the surgery. Now what is the surgical options? You have to treat um, the, you know, the definite treatment of cataract is surgery. Whatever I told you now was the temporary treatment, but the definite treatment is you have to go for the surgery and uh, uh, what you have to do, uh, the indications, you have to see the indications that either the patient is having uh, visual improvement with other means like glasses or some drops or some uh, dark or light illumination and or the medical indication. Sometimes the patient is having uh, glaucoma due to cataract formation. Sometimes the patient is having phacoanaphylactic endophthalmitis. Okay? This is also due to cataract. Sometimes patient has some disease in the retina which needs uh, some intervention and cataract is uh, present in between uh, you and the retina. So whatever intervention you need to do for the retina, you need a clear media for it. And cataract means that it is opacification of the lens. It will not allow you to visualize the retina on the back of the lens. So you have to remove the cataract first and then you will treat the retina. In these cases also you have to go for the cataract surgery. Sometimes uh, cosmetic indication to obtain black pupils. Uh, pupil is, uh, sometimes pupil becomes white, pupillary area becomes white due to dense cataract. In that case, the patient says that uh, people are, uh, you know, notifying that he said you have a whitish opacification in the center of the pupil. You have to go for the removal of the cataract in order to have the uh, in order to have the preoperative evaluation. What you have to do for the preparation of the cataract surgery. Okay. If somebody is going for cataract surgery, you have to first. Uh, you have to first do the preparation for the cataract surgery. And what is the preparation of for the cataract surgery? First, you have to examine the patient, not only the eye examination, but you have to do a systemic examination. In eye examination, what you have to see? You have to see the light perception. This is very important test because if a patient have got blind, he is in NPL, no perception of light. He can't even see the light. Then there is no use of doing surgery. Okay. If a patient has become totally blind, you know, he has become NPL, no perception of light. Then there is no need of cataract surgery. And uh, sometimes you have to uh, work up for the Marcus Gunn pupillary response. We have to look for the RAPD. This will give you an idea that if there is any problem in the visual pathway, starting from the optic disc and optic nerve to the brain, 
then you will find the RAPD or a APD, which also shows that by removing the cataract, the vision will not improve because the culprit is not the cataract. The culprit is in the visual pathway problem. So you have to inform the patient. Patient have you know a lot of ex expectations from the doctor. They say that as soon as our cataract will be removed, we will see everything. But you have to work nicely preoperatively for the patient so that you can tell them the prognosis postoperatively. It's you know it's uh, possible that you have you should have a good work of preoperatively in a cataract patient so that you can have an idea of the prognosis later on after the surgery. Yeah? So this is very important. Uh, you have to nicely work up for the cataract, and uh, you have to for the macular function. If the macula have some disease like ARMD or uh, clinically significant macular edema or striated macular edema, these are some macular diseases. If a patient is having macular diseases, you can also uh, dig that out in the presence of a cataract by doing the macular function tests like two light discrimination tests, like Maddox rod test, like uh, color vision, color perception. Okay. But color perception will not only give you the macular function, but also the uh, optic nerve function. Okay. There are other ways also like laser interferometry and objective testing like EOG, ERG, VEP, and the, this is not actually VER, this is VEP. Okay. And sometimes indirect ophthalmoscopy can visualize, while under indirect ophthalmoscopy you can visualize the retina. If it's not visualized with the direct ophthalmoscope or the slit lamp by microscopy, uh, conventional way, then you can go for indirect ophthalmoscopy also. This will tell you the condition of the retina. It's very important to have an idea that the patient is having visual uh, impairment due to the cataract or some other diseases or some associated diseases. Because if the patient is having cataract and again he is also having problem in his macula, then after removing the cataract, his vision will not improve and that the patient will blame you that you have not nicely removed the cataract or you have, you know, not a good lens for him. That's why his vision has not improved. Okay. And then you have to search for the infection. If there is any already existing, pre-existing infection in the eye, you have to remove that. You have to control the infection first and then go for the surgery. And then you have to do the anterior segment examination. This is very important because in this examination, you will uh, have to measure the intraocular pressure and uh, you have to see the uh, iris. You have to see any blood vessels, abnormal blood vessels in the iris, any opacification in the cornea. All these will give you an you know, prerequisite uh, idea about the post operative uh, you know, prognosis. What will be the post operative prognosis? After completely uh, doing workup onto the patient, that what is he having? We have worked up for the systemic diseases like diabetes. We have worked up for the uh, hypertension, and we have worked up for tuberculosis. We have worked up for any uh, medication he is taking, and then you have been done a good systemic and ocular examination. Then you will go for the pre-operative medication. What, uh, what are the pre-operative medication? Is start antibiotics before surgery. This actually removes any microorganism that are you know dangerous for the eye post-operatively so you have to you can use the topical antibiotics and then you have to take a consent you have to ask the patient to clear his eye by washing if he is having any surma inserted after in his eye then you have to ask him to remove that wash it out you have to take a written consent from the patient why because written consent is very much necessary uh, written consent will, you know, is uh, helpful even for the patient, even for the doctor also, because uh, uh, this will uh, this is very important because the patient, uh, when he gives you the consent, then uh, it will be easier for you to operate for the patient. If you haven't taken the consent, don't go for the surgery. For the medical legal purposes, because uh, in the foreign country they might uh, sue the doctor because of uh, not taking a consent or not taking any or not taking care of him uh, later on. Okay, you have to ask the patient to have a good path. If a patient is having 
intraocular pressure, uh, rise in pressure, pressure, then you have to treat that first. Even if the patient is having normal intraocular pressure, it is better to give them some uh, pressure lowering medication prior to surgery so that during surgery everything is, you know, goes smoothly. And then for the removal of the cataract, you need a dilated pupil. If the pupil is, you know, it's a window of the cataract. You don't dilate the pupil, how will the cataract come out? Okay. So you have to dilate the pupil in order to have the, uh, uh, you know, cataract surgery done. Okay. Now, uh, um, after that, sustain uh, the pupil dilate. Uh, you have to think about the anesthesia. Okay. Uh, which type of anesthesia you are preferring? Mostly, cataract surgery is done under topical or local anesthesia. Only children who are having cataract, like congenital or developmental cataract, goes for surgery under general anesthesia. Otherwise, you have to go for the topical or local anesthesia. Now, let's come to the main uh, surgical techniques of cataract surgery. The oldest technique for cataract surgery, which was used in the past and is obsolete nowadays, it's not being practiced nowadays, is the intracapsular cataract resection. As the name suggests, you remove the cataract in this case along with the capsule. Okay, the lens has to be removed along with the capsule. If you just recall the anatomy of the lens, I told you that the lens is being, uh, you know, uncovered uh, by a capsule out from outside. So the uh, lens as a whole soul is removed from the eye along with the capsule, okay? Uh, because of uh, uh, the intracapsular cataract extraction, mostly performed in the early age, and the patients uh, uh, are, were used with uh, a medicine also, which was called alpha chymotrypsin, which actually eats up the zonules and make it easier to remove the whole lens, okay? Uh, after 50 years of age, the patient do not need this enzyme. The lens is already very much, you know, weak. The zonules are weak, and you can easily remove the whole lens. Okay. Uh, nowadays, this technique is, you know, obsolete. But sometimes, if the lens is subluxated or dislocated from its position, then you have to do ICCE, intracapsular cataract extraction. Okay. Uh, in this case, what you have to do, you have to, what is the technique, just apply uh, suture in order to get the eye fixed and then you have to give the, you have to make a conjunctival flap, you have to make a cutter, then uh, you have to give a corneal section, you have to do iridectomy and then you have to remove the lines. This is the technique. Actually, ICC is not asked in your exam. That the steps are not all, you just should know what is ICC. Okay, okay, yes, this is the picture. They are showing you that how they remove the whole lens after removal of the lens. They have put an anterior chamber and intraocular lens. Uh, you can see that uh, this is this is the cataract. They have made an incision over here. You can see they are using scissors. And then this is the cataract. They are removing it, the whole cataract along with the zonules. These, you know, are the, you know, showing the zonules. They have removed the cataract. And then this is the intraocular lens. This is the anterior chamber intraocular lens. Remember, in case of uh, intracapsular cataract extraction, you can't insert a posterior chamber intraocular lens. You have to insert anterior chamber intraocular lens because there is no sulcus, no place to put the PC lens or the posterior chamber intraocular lens. Okay? The other is the extracapsular capsular cataract extraction. Major portion of the anterior capsule is removed along with the cortex and the nucleus. Okay, We just uh, keep the posterior capsule intact in case of extracapsular, that is why the name has been given extracapsular capsular extraction because we preserve the posterior capsule and the sulcus because we want to have a site where you can thereafter insert a posterior chamber and lens. Okay, 
PCIOL, PCIOL, Posterior Chamber Interocular Lines. The anterior one is ACIOL, Anterior Chamber Interocular Lines, which was put in ICCE, Intracapsular Gas Duct Extraction. While Posterior Chamber Interocular Lines, uh, PCIOL is uh, put in Extracapsular Capsular Gas Duct Extraction, which is called ECCE. Okay, so uh, the indication are cataracts, especially the adult cataracts. Okay, sometimes in childhood cataracts. Okay, you can't do an extra capsular construction in a subluxated or a dislocated cataract. No, that is not possible. In those cases, you have to do the intracapsular cataract extraction. This extra capsular cataract extraction is also called the conventional cataract surgery. Then uh, there is a, a modified extra capsular cataract extraction, which is called the small incision cataract surgery. And then there is further you know, um, advanced surgery that is done nowadays is called the phaco emulsification. We will discuss all of these. Don't worry about that. In the conventional extracapsular cataract extraction, we actually first of all fixate the eye, and then uh, with the help of a brittle suture, and then we make an incision and make a flap uh, that is called the corneal spiral uh, section and then we inject the viscoelastic and then what are the viscoelastic used? Mostly they are the methyl cellulose, sometimes the sodium hyaluronate. These are the viscoelastic. What is the function of the viscoelastic? They actually will keep the anterior chamber, you know, inflated. They will uh, not, uh, you know, allow the anterior chamber to collapse. Okay. Then you will do the anterior capsulotomy. You have to remove some of the anterior capsule there are techniques for it, like can opener technique, envelope technique, and the continuous curvilinear capsular axis. These are the three techniques for anterior capsulotomy. If you are worried about the steps of the cataract surgery, don't worry because uh, after the university we open in the department, we really do many cases, cataract cases in the department. We will show you practically. But for that, you should have a background theoretical knowledge what we are doing. That's why we are just telling you what we do in cataract surgery. Okay. After anterior capsulotomy, we just, uh, you know, uh, do hydrodissection. That is, we uh, insert fluid in between the uh, cortical and the nuclear matter as well as in between, in behind the, uh, behind the uh, capsule. Okay. So the hydrodissection and hydrodelineation. After that, we remove the nucleus. In case of extra conventional cataract surgery and a small incision cataract surgery, we usually remove the nucleus, the whole nucleus. We don't uh, piece it. We just remove the whole nucleus with the pressure and counter pressure technique. And then after removal of the nucleus, what is remaining behind is the cortex. So we have to remove the cortex with uh, by aspiration technique and then after removal of the cortex everything is okay everything is you know clear now it is the time to insert the intraocular lens we actually insert posterior chamber intraocular lens we remove we wash out the viscoelastic which was inserted in the first step because uh, if you will leave the viscoelastic in the eye it can increase the intraocular pressure later on and then we close the incision this is all what we do now these are the steps, just see. And in the first step, after the incision, we are doing, this is the can opener technique of capsulotomy. We are cutting the anterior capsule. These, uh, yeah, this is all, this is, we have done anterior capsulotomy, the zigzag. This is can opener, okay. And then after that, we have, by the pressure, around the anti-pressure, the counter pressure, we are removing the nucleus, and then after nucleus, this is the aspiration. We are removing the peripheral cortical matter from here. Now everything is clear. Now this is the posterior chamber intraocular lens that we are inserting into the eye. This will go behind into the bag, into the capsular bag. We are inserting it. That is in between the rim of the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule. This will be placed over there and will be centralized over there. So uh, don't worry about the surgery. We will show you practically. In a small incision, the same technique like extracapsular, and but over here, the incision is very small. 
that is about 1.5 millimeter about and then we have to make a side port entry okay and then we have the same thing we have to do the anti me then we have to do the hydro dissection the same thing the same steps but over here we prolab the nucleus into the anterior chamber and then remove it with the uh, you know extractor uh, through the you know canal uh, we don't use the pressure and counter pressure technique over here the incision is very small and therefore we have to implant the uh, intraocular lens thereafter after aspiration of the cortex and then finally we close the bone okay over here first of all you have to make an incision over in the sclera 1 to 1.5 millimeter make a canal this is a canal a spiral canal at uh, you know 12 o'clock superior okay this is an incision we are made okay after that you are making with the cystotome you are doing the anterior capsulotomy after capsulotomy bring the anterior nucleus into the anterior chamber and remove it with the spatula and after that just aspirate the uh, cortical matter insert intraocular lens and close the wound this is the small incision cataract surgery finally we go for the phaco emulsification over here a very very small you know incision is made that is a 3 mm okay and then uh, what we do that continuous uh, ccc we do not do a can opener capsulotomy but in this case we do continuous curvilinear capsular axis i will show you how is this done after that hydro dissection is done nucleus is not removed as a whole but instead uh, just a moment amaji malik sir nanna my patient bas ma paaje mein main chaahta hu ki jaldi aaye okay uh so in uh, in the phaco emulsification i was talking about phaco emulsification you don't remove the that is the difference the main difference in between the conventional conventional extra capsular 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 extraction and the phaco emulsification the major difference is that in this case the incision is small the nucleus instead of being removed as a whole it is emulsified and then aspirated emulsified there is a phaco probe which emulsifies the nucleus and then you have to aspirate the nucleus matter after that the lens matter is aspirated as in the other procedures iul is implanted and uh, viscoelastic is removed and then you just close the wound okay this is the benefit now here i am showing you this is the phaco probe okay and this is the ccc anterior capsulotomy is done by continuous curvilinear capsular axis okay in this case you this is not a zigzag capsulotomy but this is a continuous you know capsular rexis where you start from one end and bring the rexis to, to 360 degrees and complete it over here after this rexis you do the hydro dissection and delineation and then with uh, this is the hydro dissection you are doing and this is the hydro delineation in hydro dissection you push the water in between the lens and the capsule in hydro delineation you push the water in between the cortex and the nucleus after that with the help of the phaco probe you just emulsify the nucleus break it into pieces and then aspirate it okay emulsify this is see this is being emulsified due to emulsification it is uh, you know it becomes soft and it is being aspirated with the same phaco probe this is the phaco emulsification basically okay in children we actually the lens is very very soft and therefore we just uh, aspirate it due to which it is called lensectomy okay we do not remove the whole lens we just the procedure is same only that the nucleus is not hard so we just aspirate it okay that's why this is called lensectomy sometimes we have to do the along with that lensectomy we have to do the 
posterior capsule or me because there is a complication called ECO which is very common in children that's why the after removing the cataract we also do the posterior capsule or me with the help of the uh, cutter machine vitreous cutter we just uh, remove the uh, two third of the vitreous also so that the vitreous do not comes in the anterior chamber in the future in children we do this so uh, that is why we call this procedure as lancytomy with anti uh, with posterior capsulotomy and anterior vitreotomy okay uh, now there are different types of lenses i told you there is anterior chamber intraocular lens posterior chamber intraocular lens there are some iris supported lenses okay and there are then some foldable lenses okay this is the anterior chamber lens very simple this is posterior chamber lens this is iris claw lens that is iris it is being fixed with the iris iris supports it it is being supported by the iris the main three types of lenses so thank you this completes the uh, today's uh, you know topic of a, a treatment of cataract basically it's a you know practical topic and we will show you all these steps in the ot inshallah when you will start coming to the department in your rotation if there is any question i am unmuting it so that you can ask me uh, the questions yes students any question students any question among you about cataract management you don't have any question no sir it means you all have got the idea about cataract management actually uh, this was not my presentation i have taken it from slide share okay so all of you can also uh, get this uh, presentation this was very nice presentation that's why i took it from this side because uh, uh, it has covered all the you know aspects of the management of cataract uh, you i will just open the first page so that you can yourself get it from the net this was a very nice presentation uh, yes management of cataract with this name okay management of cataract in slide share anyone if uh, they want this uh, presentation you can get this from the uh, this side slide share management of cataract okay if there is no question inshallah we will uh, continue in the next uh, class on monday thank you students